From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. What a day to be alive. It is so wonderful to know that in the chaos of this world, God is still in control. And we're going to end with that wonderful thought at the conclusion of the program. But first of all, I'm going to quote somebody we all know. Mitt Romney says, Obama should say no to the deal with Iran. Going on, Prime Minister Netanyahu says, is Israel facing attack on its right to exist. Oh my. And Russia to boost nuclear space defense against who? The United States. So, you know, friends, I am so happy that God really is in control. And uh, I want to start on a little lighter note here today by saying that spring is here. Now, when I was a little girl, I think I was about maybe four or five years old, my mother taught me something. It's not too good grammatically, but I like it. Spring is here, the grass is riz. I wonder where the flowers is. <laughs> uh, Jack? Please don't do that in the program anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't need to go outside to find the flowers. You give me my flowers inside. Well, I like this one. You know, the trees begin to drop their sap, and I've often said spring is the time when the sap begins to run and the girl begins to chase. <laughs> <laughs> and when Rex Seller was after me, boy, I tell you, I ran as fast as I could backwards <laughs> so that she'd catch me. Oh, I'll tell you, at that time I had a guy living with me who was six foot eight, and uh, he couldn't understand why I was so enamored with this Rex Seller I had seen. And I said, ooh, 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 if you only could see her. And you know, a lot of you guys write and you say, boy, if I had a wife like yours. Oh, my. And then, of course, some of the women say, Oh, I wish I had a husband like yours. Yeah. Oh, we're really lucky we have one another, honey. Amen. Let's get going here. Yeah. Oh, my. It's always good to have a good a smile in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, isn't it? In the light of everything we're going to be talking about today. The first article has to do with President Obama, who is being greatly criticized for his nuclear agreement with Iran, and according to many, he should show courage to do the right thing. Now, here you see Mitt Romney, and he is saying Obama should say no deal to Iran. And then again, Ben Carson has really spoken out, America must take a stand with Israel. Now, there are two issues. One has to do with Iran, and the other has to do with Israel. And I'm going to go to Jack and ask him a very important question. Are they right on these two issues? The president on Iran and the president also on Israel. We need to stand with Israel. Oh, right. And I love this Dr. Carson, a great black brother. And if he runs, I'm going to vote for him because he stands for America. Now, are we to warn people? You better believe it. Ezekiel 3.17, Son of man, I've made you a watchman. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Now, this has to do with Islam. Ezekiel 33.3, When you see the sword come upon your land, blow the trumpet, warn my people. And you know, it was a sad thing when Netanyahu was speaking that Sister Belosi sat there with tears because she said our president was being offended because of the way Netanyahu did this. Hey, if you're going to cry, cry about what's going on in America. Isaiah 58, 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and warn my people. Now, what's going on? Israel is a hated nation. It's always been that way, but it's going to change. I'm about to make a video to be released in May. Get this, because I can prove it with the word of God. Coming soon. The Judea Christian New World Order. Oh, I'm fired up. I'm studying day and night. That's what's going to happen when Jesus comes. We have the New World Order. It's going to be a different day. But right now, Israel has to suffer. 
Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Tribulation hour. It's Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was from the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be again, except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, the Jew. I got him, going to shorten the days. They have the elect, Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and 65, 9, and 22. And I want to tell you what I heard last night on the Greta Van Susteren show. She had... John Bolton, who was formerly the ambassador to the United Nations. And he said, man, I was moved. He said, we're going to have to make a move soon against Iran. Because right now, Iran is setting up a base in Bolivia for missiles to attack the United States of America. At the same time, we've got a president that wants to remove the label of terrorist for Iran and Hezbollah of Lebanon. It's dangerous. Not only that, but Putin. You know, when he was not president, he put in Medvedev as a fill-in until he came again. Our president once said, hey, Medvedev, don't tell anyone this, but when Putin gets back in, I'm going to do some good things for him. One thing he did for him was cancel the missile bases in Poland and the Czech Republic to protect the European Union nations because they're in disfavor with Putin. Now, we've done that for them. Guess what Putin's doing? He's been to Cuba with the Castro brothers. He has gone to Venezuela when Chavez was alive and said, I want to make a base here to shoot the missiles over into America. And our Congress and Senate was alarmed. He also said, Putin, let's follow a non-proliferation treaty to get rid of our missiles. Our president has done it. Putin hasn't. God help America. God save us. We are in trouble. Mm. Warn my people. Yes, Jack, and you're doing that. Thank yeah. you so much. We need to be listening, though, don't we? Now, while well, the Prime Minister spoke to our Congress, and you spoke about that just a moment ago, Jack, he get, did give a very powerful message, a very strong, strong speech, in that he I gave some accusations that really was plain and forceful. And take a look. Did you see that face? He's serious. Israel versus the world. And there he is at the Congress. And that was on March the 3rd. Powerful. This is one thing that he had to say. The people of Iran are very talented people. They're heirs to one of the world's great civilizations. But in 1979, they were hijacked by religious zealots. Religious zealots who imposed on them immediately a dark, brutal dictatorship. The regime's founder, Ayatollah Khomeini, exhorted his followers to export the revolution throughout the world. We must all stand together to stop Iran's march of conquest, subjugation, and terror. That is strong, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Again, he said, Israel's facing an attack on its right to exist. And take a look, please. If they are attacked, one Iranian nuke, three million dead Israelis. Well, take a look, please, at this picture. I have used this picture before, and also the statements from this gentleman, Grand Ayatollah Al Khomeini. And Jack, I'm going to stop here because I, I think it would be good if you were to refresh our memory once again as to who he really is. Khomeini was the one who was deposed from Iran. After many years, he came back, 1979. And he is the one that's behind everything that's going on now. ISIS, over in Syria, all the slaughter. And he said himself, if we Iranians can get an atom bomb, I don't care how many of our people die, as long as we can set up our flag 
in all the nations of the world. God forgive that brutality. But that's part of this peaceful religion. All right, Jack, my oh my. Doesn't sound peaceful, does it, friends? And it isn't. Now let's go back, if you will, please, to 2006. I'd like for you to see a statement made by this gentleman. The spirit of the Grand Ayatollah Khomeini lives on in Iran. This is the same Khomeini who said in 1981, I say let Iran go up in smoke provided Islam emerges triumphant in the rest of the world. That's what they said. Yes, absolutely. And going back even farther, they've been planning this for a long, long time, friends. The governments of the world should know that. Islam will be victorious in all the countries of the world. And Islam and the teaching of the Quran will prevail all over the world. Now I'm going to put another gentleman on here, and that is Mohammed Kabani. And of course, he is the chairman of the Islamic Supreme Council of America. And Jack, I'd like for you to read this, if you would, please. I will. And remember, he's the man that heads up Islam in America, and Rick Warren spoke for him twice. And Christians write and say, why do you speak out against this? He probably went there to tell him about Jesus. Well, wait till you hear this article. If he started mentioning anything about salvation through Jesus, he'd been dead the next morning. Listen, we see that the Mahdi will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mahdi will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. And Prophet Jesus, our Muslim Prophet Jesus, will be the executioner under Mahdi. And Islam will be victorious over all the religions. God forgive you. And God forgive you, Rick, for saying, we're having their teachers, the Imans from Islam, come to our church and we're showing all the similarities. Why don't you take the Word of God and the Jewish Old Testament and the Christian New Testament and show the similarities there? I challenge you to do it. That's the true people of God. You're monkeying around with the wrong crowd. You know, check on that last statement. My oh my. And Islam will be victorious over all the religions. Well, you know, they're using their prophet Jesus and uh, it's not the same Jesus. I don't know. I talked to so many people all week long, and none of them seem to know that they have a Jesus, and, and we have a Jesus, but they're not the same. Their prophet Jesus is the opposite of our Savior Jesus. Correct, Jack? Rick Stella, I promised God I would do this once a month. Now, I appreciate Greta and the great work she is doing and Bill O'Reilly, and Hannity, and Judge Janine. But I'm going to ask all of you to do something, and I'm going to give you the verses to do it. You speak out against Islam all the time, but you don't tell them what Islam believes about Jesus, and they're telling every Christian, oh, he's our Jesus, he's our prophet, we love him like you do. Well, if you love him like we do, why are you killing everyone who receives Jesus into their hearts and lives. Now, here's what they teach. Allah says, anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will burn in hell forever. Quran, chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7. More. Jesus says, I didn't die on a cross. That was all just a story rigged. He said, and since I've left, I have converted. I've become a Muslim. And I am now the Ayman and minister for Islam. And it is my job under Mukti, the Messiah of Iran, Mr. President, to say, if you do not receive Allah and my preaching, it is my job, the Jesus of Islam, the prophet Jesus, to put to death every Jew and Christian. Oh, come on now. You want to hear it? That is Surah, that's a chapter, so I'll say chapter, it's easier for me. Chapter 4, verses 157 to 59 and 172 and 73. Chapter 5, verses 72, 73. Chapter 6, verse 19. Chapter 9, verse 30. And chapter 19, verses 33 and 88. Look it up. That's what they've done to our Jesus. It'll be Jesus saying, you either convert or die. 
God forgive you. Mm. You know, Jack, their Jesus is an executioner. Our Jesus is the Savior. How wonderful to know that God gave his son that we could have a Savior to redeem us at Calvary. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, we're going on with the Prime Minister's speech that he gave at the Joint Session of Congress. Take a look here. Visions clash on Iran nuclear talks, of course. And here, this is something that he said. Now, Jack, would you like to read this? It is really powerful. The greatest dangers facing our world is the marriage of militant Islam and nuclear weapons. Iran was also caught, caught twice, not once, twice, operating secret nuclear facilities in the Tanz and Quam. Facilities that inspectors didn't even know existed. Right now, Iran could be hiding nuclear facilities that we don't know about, and that's the U.S. and Israel not knowing about it. My, I can't believe that they could hide this. Well, let's go on here. Here you see a picture of the Ayatollah Khomeini. Now, he is Iran's supreme leader. Let's see what he has to say about Israel. Israel is a rabid dog. Oh, my. That's brutal. Yes, it is. And then also, Zionist regime will disappear from the map. Oh, my. And Khamenei also says, keep arming Palestinians until Israel is destroyed. And Iran's Khamenei increasing global hatred of Israel is a sign of divine help. And the John Bolton that Jack referred to a few moments ago, Ambassador of the United Nations, extreme urgency to challenge Iran's nuclear arms. And Iran is closer to nuclear capabilities than ever. And Tehran vows to accelerate arming of Palestinians. Now you know what? Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was voted back in. He said that's not going to happen. It will not happen. Experts say Iran's missile arsenal poses a threat to who? The United States. Now, Jack, doesn't it sound like uh, something horrendous is truly going to happen? There you have Iran, the missiles, Israel, Palestine. It's all in the headlines today. But I want to know, is it in the Bible? That's what really counts. Did God give us this, Jack? Now, I've always quoted numbers, and you took my word for it. Now I'm going to give you the words found in the numbers. And this is one of the firsts for me on television, because we usually don't have enough time. The Bible teaches Armageddon is coming, and Russia, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is involved, China, Revelation 16, 12, and Iran, Persia, Ezekiel 38, 5. And Persia changed its name to Iran and Iraq in 1932. What a book. Now, everything you hear about the atom right now is from these nations, all right? First of all, Psalm 97, 3, a fire goes before them. Isaiah 66, 15, the Lord will come with fire as he trying to stop them and spare and save Israel. Ezekiel 20, 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Now, this is tremendous. Joel 2, verse 3, this is the Russian army, and they're moving down with fire against Israel. And lo and behold, as they're pushed back to Siberia, it says in verse 31, I saw blood, fire, pillars of smoke, the exact effects of a nuclear bomb. Watch for those three words in a moment. Zephaniah 1.18, the whole land shall be devoured by fire. And then Malachi 4.1 says, the day cometh that shall burn as in heaven, and a third part of the trees was burned, all green grass was burned, Revelation 8.7. But here is the battle itself defined, explained, envisioned. Revelation 9.14-18, loose the four demons into the great Rebbe Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. And then over the army was 200,000, 200 million, and by these three, hear those three words again, fire, smoke, brimstone. The Bible says one-third of humanity will die. 
just through that atomic war. Well, you know, Jack, Prime Minister Netanyahu made a powerful statement about Iran in his speech. Again, take a look at what he said. The foremost sponsor of international terrorism could be weeks away from having enough enriched uranium for an entire arsenal of nuclear weapons. And this with full international legitimacy. And then Russia's Putin visit to Iran, of course, that's the capital of Iran, for nuclear talks. Russia to boost nuclear space defense forces against, oh, the United States. And Russia threatens end of all security ties with U.S. and the EU. Here's her buddy. China turns to a new hero, Putin the Great. And the largest military drills, the Air Force of Russia and China, completed the largest joint training exercise in their history on August 15 at a firing range in the Ural Mountains. Oh, Jack, tie this all together for us, will you please? Oh, Rexella, this book, this prophecy in this book is 2,500 years old, and the hour is about to happen. And this is when Jesus returns. We'll tell you about that. First of all, it says Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh are the ones involved in this war of the latter years and latter days, Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. First name you see there is Gog. The Caucasus Mountains running throughout Russia mean Fort of Gog. Next is Magog. The Greeks call the Scythians who settled Russia Magog or Magogites. Then you see Meshach, that's the original name for Moscow. Meshach, Mosach, Moskothi, and Moscow. Four, you see Tubal. This is where Gary Powers, the U-2 pilot, was shot down many years ago, and on your map, it's Tobolsk. Now, they also come from the east. Here are the Chinese armies uniting with Russia, Daniel 1144. And it's the kings of the east, the sun rising, coming down, to the Euphrates River to cross to go against the Jew. Wow. And it's going to be the bloodiest battle in history. But wait a minute. Iran is with them. Russia's there right this week making new deals over nuclear weaponry. Ezekiel 38.5. And it says Persia. Persia changed its name to Iran in 1932. And what a battle it's going to be, ladies and gentlemen. And it's happening right now as ISIS starts the war in the Euphrates Rivers area. Whew. But it's going to spread. And as I said, time after time, 18 times Israel is the battleground of the world. And there was no Israel to invade for 2011 years until 1948. So this is the time for us. And you know what's going to happen soon? We're going to hear the words, come up hither, Revelation 401. And we're going to sweep through 187 trillion billions of miles in 11 one hundredths of a second. It's called the rapture. And it's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. For Excella. wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Jesus is going to take us out of this mess before it starts. Mm, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. How good it is to know that Jesus is coming back again to stop all this mess. But are you ready for his coming? Have you opened your heart to Jesus as your Savior? Will you do that, please? As Jack prays this wonderful prayer, he died for you. He wants to be your Savior. Will you open your heart right now, Jack? There were three crosses. A thief on either side of Jesus, and one said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Nine words. You preachers make it so hard for people. Jesus said, that's it. This day will you be with me in paradise. Those simple nine words. Will you pray them now? Lord, remember me. I've sinned. We all have. And oh, I face my sins sometimes and say, God can never save me. Yes, he can. He can save from the uttermost to the uttermost. That book says, Jesus, we're all sinners. I repent. I come back. I ask you to save me, Jesus, like you did that thief on the cross. And right now, I'm asking you, be my savior. I accept you 
and what you did on the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Then you just became a child of God. How wonderful to be a member of the family of the Lord because you opened your heart to him. There's my address. Let me know, will you please? I'll send you this little booklet, absolutely free, first steps in a new direction. I want to know that you opened your heart to Jesus as your Savior. And now, friends, uh, just a few minutes ago, Jack referred to the rapture. This is our offer of the week, the rapture generation. Are we really? Take a look, please, at this wonderful promo. Could 2015 include the return of Christ? Date setting is never accurate. Fulfilled prophecy is. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are about to ride. Global devastation is on the horizon. But good news, soon millions will be evacuated, missing the 21 judgments taking place on Earth as we sweep through 187 trillion, billions of miles in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, what a ride as we whiz by Mars and numerous planets to reach God's throne in the third heaven. This event is about to happen. Jesus said when you see all the signs, you will know this momentous event is near, even at the door. To date, all 500 signs have been fulfilled, including the final two major signs only 21st century inhabitants have witnessed after 2,030 years. We are the generation that could experience the greatest flight ever, the rapture. Don't be left behind. Prepare to meet God. Order the rapture generation today. Yes, make it today, please. There's a number and there is the address. And you know what? Connect the dots. You can if you get this with terrorism, Islam, Christ coming, and all the rest. We have it on here. So you need to order right away. Please call or write. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order The Rapture Generation on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. Please, as we, I say all the time, don't put it up. You need to know what's going on in the world, how it's connected with your life and with what's going to happen in the future. Make the call right away. You're trying to give your children advice, and they just won't listen. Let me give you a wonderful saying here. Children's ears may be closed to advice, but their eyes are always open to example. How very true. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.